And now I know your question is, well, Mel, what is a battery? Well, I'm sure you already know what a battery is, or at least you've have had experiences with batteries, whether it's charging your cell phone or putting batteries in a flashlight. But let's have a very simple definition of a battery. A battery is a device that maintains a separation of positive and negative charges through chemical means. This separation of charge establishes a potential difference across a battery's terminals. The most common source of electric potential is a battery, which uses chemical reactions to separate charge. A battery consists of chemicals, called electrolytes, sandwiched between two electrodes made of different metals. Chemical reactions in the electrolytes transport ions, in other words, charged particles, from one electrode to the other. This chemical process pulls positive and negative charges apart, creating a potential difference between the terminals of the battery. When the chemicals are used up, the reactions cease and the battery is dead. So let's summarize what I just said. A battery uses chemical reactions to separate charge, thereby creating a potential difference. It's the chemical reactions that supply the energy to do the work to lift the positive charges from low to high potential and lower the negative charges from high to low potential. The work done per charge is called the EMF of the battery. And that's given by that fancy symbol. It's a Greek letter called Kasai. And so that EMF, Kasai, is equal to the work per unit charge. Now, the separation of charge creates a potential difference between the battery's terminals. So one thing you should remember is that an ideal battery has a terminal voltage equal to the EMF. Now in real batteries, there's some level of resistive losses within the battery. So in a real battery, the terminal voltage that you get out of the battery is actually less than the overall EMF of the battery. A common analogy for batteries is that they act like electrical pumps. And this electrical pump, just like a water pump, will cause water to circulate around a water circuit, if you will, um, allowing water to go from lower pressure using the pump to take it back to higher pressure to continue the circulation. Batteries act like electrical pumps that force positive charges to move from lower potential to higher potential in a circuit. So a charge by itself in a circuit will readily go from high to low potential. But now when you go back from low to high potential, it takes work. Now, instead of thinking of it as an electrical pump, I actually kind of like to think of batteries and sources of EMFs using an analogy of a skier on a ski slope. So imagine that there's a skier who wants to ski her favorite mountain. Now this skier doesn't want to expend a lot of her own energy to get to the top of the mountain. So what she does is she catches a ride on an escalator. This escalator does work to pull her up the mountainside. Now the higher up she goes on the mountain, the greater her potential energy. So the escalator does work to increase the potential energy of our skier. You can think of this escalator as a battery, and you can think of the skier as a positive charge. 
Now, you know that positive charges will naturally move by themselves from high to low potential. So that skier, once she gets to the top of the mountain, is going to just ski all the way down without any assistance, using just the potential energy that she stored from gravity. Well, a battery does the same thing with positive charges. It lifts positive charges from a lower energy state to a higher energy state, even though naturally they would want to go from high energy to low energy. So the battery lifts the positive charge from low potential to high potential. Now, once this positive charge reaches the higher potential terminal, that positive charge will just naturally go all the way down the ski slope, all the way down using the electric potential, potential energy it has until it reaches its lowest point of electric potential. At that point, that charge is like, well, I don't want to climb back up the mountain. So, so what happens is the battery provides the work to lift the charge back up. And then the charge can continue going round and round, just like a skier skiing her favorite slope. Gets lifted by the escalator, increasing her potential, and then skis down the mountainside, lowering her potential, eventually returning to her starting point to be lifted by the escalator again. And the skier can go round and round as often as she wishes, as long as that escalator is working. This is the same for charges. As long as the battery has a difference in potential between its terminals, it can continue to lift positive charges from low to high potential as they circulate round and round in our circuit. 